Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am W2Best and I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. If you're new around here, I would be super happy to see you as a subscriber to the channel and maybe even clicking that bell notification button so that you can be notified when I upload new videos. Over the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be uploading a lot of gear reviews from the gear I have with me when traveling. And I'm also gonna put up some different travel videos from stuff that I'm doing while I'm on the road out interrailing in Europe for about six weeks. In this video, however, I wanted to talk to you about the Dell Latitude 7200 12-inch 2-in-1 computer. This one was quite recently announced and I think this might just be the most interesting 2-in-1 device that is out on the market right now. Let's look at why it's that interesting. The Latitude 7200 is from the Latitude concept, which is part of Dell's business line. This means that it's mainly targeted towards business users, and that means that the marketing and the landing pages are slightly different from what you might see if you're looking for Inspiron or the XPS lineup. If you think this landing page looks boring, that's probably the reason. I actually have quite a bit of experience with the Latitude series because I had a Latitude 5285 about a year and a half ago. I bought it used on eBay, got a really good price for it. Then a week after I received it, I left it in my office overnight. And during that night, there was a break in at the office and the laptop was stolen. So I got approximately one week's use out of the 700 euros I spent for that computer. It was uh, not the best computer experience I've had, but at least I got to test the Dell Latitude experience and see a little bit how it is. And what I can say is that both connectivity-wise and keyboard-wise, the Latitude series is really good. The keyboard cover is way better than the Lenovo keyboard cover that I'm using now in my Meek 720 that I got afterwards. And I think it's even better than the Surface Pro's keyboard cover. The Latitude 5285 also had two regular USB ports together with one USB-C port. It didn't have Thunderbolt, although the 5290 that was released quite recently afterwards had an option to get the premium priced model, the highest spec model, which had a V Pro processor and it had Thunderbolt. But that one was extremely expensive. It was around $3,000 to purchase. So I didn't think it was very interesting at the time. Now, Latitude 7200 has come out and this one adds two Thunderbolt ports, which is just amazing, I think. Even this computer, my Dell Inspiron 15 7000, only has one Thunderbolt port. Even XPS 15 only has one Thunderbolt port. And then this device comes out with two Thunderbolt ports. That's just a really good thing to have. The basic specifications are what you could expect from a two-in-one computer. They have the U processors, so it's a 15 watt processor. You get Windows 10 Pro, you get the integrated graphics cards, the 620, the only two-in-one that has something else is the Acer, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's got an MX150 graphics card in it. And also you have the Surface Pro laptops, which have the 640 and 650 graphics built in on the processor instead of the quite bad 620 that is the most common one. It has a 12.3 inch display, up to 512 gigabytes of storage and up to 16 gigabytes of memory. It says onboard memory, so I assume that means it's not going to be upgradable, which is quite a common thing for two-in-ones. In general, they don't have that great upgradability. Since this comparison part of the page basically just repeats what I just said, I'm going to skip over that and then I'm going to go to the ports straight away. And we can see here that all the configurations, regardless of price and regardless of specification, has two Thunderbolt 3 port with power delivery and display port out. They also have one regular USB-A port with power share. They have the optional fingerprint reader, an audio jack, a SIM card slot for being able to have constant connection to the internet contacted or contactless smart card reader 
which is to add an extra layer of safety to be able to log into the machine. It also features a micro SD card reader, which I'm very happy to see because I have had tons of use of my micro SD card reader. My Osmo Pocket and my Mavic Air both have micro SD cards. So being able to just pop the memory card out of them and then just putting it into the computer and just transferring footage straight away without the use of cables or adapters is just an amazing thing to have. Last but not least, they also have this lock slot so you can lock it up. That's probably what I should have done when I left my computer in the office overnight, but I didn't and then it was stolen. The dimensions and weight I find also to be quite interesting. They are similar to most of the 2-in-1 devices with a weight of 935 grams. However, they state that there are two versions of it. So when you scroll down a little bit further, you see that in this dimensions and weight part, they say that there is one called the slim model that has a starting weight of 851 grams. And then there's the secure model, which I assume is gonna be the model that has this security card reader. And that one starts at 935 grams. So that one adds about 70 grams weight to the computer and also adds a little bit of extra height to it. Uh, this is 12.15 millimeters instead of 9.3 millimeters. That's quite a big difference actually. And I would definitely go for the slim model, but I'm not a business user in that way, so I don't need that extra layer of security. This kind of setup is one of the main reasons why I love these computers. With only a package of 850 grams and one Thunderbolt dock or Thunderbolt cable, you're able to plug this in to two external screens or three external screens and you don't have to have this big bulky laptop with its own keyboard standing on your desk and taking up a lot of space. So to me, that's just a really good thing with two-in-one devices to remove that keyboard and just put it on your desk and it gives this clean look without the keyboard taking up a lot of space. The battery is unfortunately only 38 watts and it's no other options. It's a 38 watt hour battery. And I'm not sure how long that's gonna last. I guess we have to wait for some other tests of it to see how the battery life is. It's a two cell 38 watt battery. So mm, it's probably not gonna be that long lasting. Last but not least, let's have a look at the pricing for these products. When you are in Dell's business line looking for laptops, sometimes they are stating the prices without VAT. Be on the lookout for that because if you add this to your cart and think it's a super low price, then at checkout they might have added an extra 15 or 25% VAT depending on what country you're in. The cheapest model goes for $919, which I find to be a very, very good price. However, that one is not a very high spec model. It only comes with a 4 gigabyte RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which means that you'd basically not be able to use it as a proper laptop. It would more be like a tablet configuration. You don't want to use that as your only working device with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. That's one thing I can tell you for sure. So you want to move up to the next model in line, which comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. That one comes in at $1,499, which is still a really fair price for a device like this with two Thunderbolt 3 ports. The top of the line model has a better spec with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and also the best processor, i7-8665U with vPro capabilities, if that's something you need. The top model comes in at $2,119, which is currently a bit discounted. So I'm not sure what the regular price will be because Dell runs so frequent sales on their products that it's actually quite hard to keep track of. But the current price listed on Dell's website is from $1,000 
1499 for that 8 gigabyte ram 256 storage model up to 2119 dollars for the most expensive model microsoft just recently announced their surface pro 7 but in my personal opinion this computer is way more interesting than the surface pro 7. what do you think would you get a latitude 7200 as your preferred two-in-one device I would love to have that thing while traveling, but since it hasn't got that good graphics power, I will stick with my Dell Inspiron 15 for traveling. This still though is a really interesting package and I'm super keen to see some more tests of it coming up online. I'm W2Best, I make videos about tech travel and inspiration. I would love to have you as a subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you in the next video. Have a really nice day, bye bye.